they terrified Rome, vanished from history, and left behind almost no written record. Yet their name still echoes across ancient chronicles. The Cimbri remain one of antiquity's most elusive tribes, a people whose origins have puzzled historians for centuries. Were they Celts? Were they early Germans? Or did they emerge from an older, forgotten branch of Indo-European migrants? Now, with new DNA evidence and archaeological reevaluations, scientists are uncovering answers that challenge everything we thought we knew. This investigation takes us deep into the genetic roots of a tribe Rome could defeat in battle, but never fully understand. The Cimbri entered the stage of ancient history like a storm. Around 120 BCE, Roman observers described a massive migration emerging from the northern fringes of Europe, a people unknown, unsettling, and seemingly unstoppable. They swept southward from what classical writers believed to be the distant lands of Jutland or the northern German coast, driving before them a wave of panic that would culminate in the Cimbrian War between 113 and 101 BCE. To the Romans, the Cimbri were unlike any enemy they had faced. Ancient accounts describe towering warriors with fair hair, fierce eyes, and booming voices, clad in strange northern armor and accompanied by wagon trains carrying their families and supplies. Their battlefield presence was so overwhelming that several Roman armies were annihilated. Only the reforms and leadership of Gaius Marius eventually halted their advance. Yet even as they entered history dramatically, they remained a mystery. Classical authors disagreed on nearly every aspect of their identity. Some believed them to be Celts because their migrations resembled earlier Latin movements. Others argued they were Germans due to their physical features and northern origins. A few suspected something older, a remnant of Bronze Age tribes that once dominated the North Sea world. Complicating matters, the Cimbri left no written language and few distinct archaeological markers. Their homeland was equally uncertain. Some sources placed them in the Danish peninsula, others in northern Germany's plains. A few even hint at Scandinavian origins. For over 2,000 years, the Cimbri have remained suspended between categories, part Celtic, part Germanic, and part unknown. Only now, with advances in ancient DNA, are scientists beginning to uncover who they truly were. To understand the Cimbri, we must first understand their homeland, or rather, the debate surrounding it. Most ancient sources place the Cimbri at the northern edge of Europe, in the Jutland Peninsula, an exposed strip of land wedged between the North Sea and the Baltic. Archaeology confirms that this region during the early Iron Age was a cultural crossroads, shaped by isolation yet heavily influenced by distant neighbors. Excavations across Jutland reveal settlements characterized by longhouses, simple farming communities, and fortified enclosures. But the real clues lie in the bog's eerie, waterlogged landscapes that have preserved human bodies, weapons, shields, and ritual offerings with astonishing detail. The Tallinn Man, Grobble Man, and other bog bodies testify to a culture with deeply ritualistic practices, some involving sacrifice. Weapons found in these bogs show a blend of styles. Celtic Latin ornamentation appears alongside distinctly Proto-Germanic spears and shields. This mixture suggests that Northern Europe in the Iron Age was far from culturally pure. It was a contact zone where ideas flowed freely. The geography of Jutland played a decisive role. Its windswept coasts connected it to long-distance maritime routes reaching Britain, the Rhine, and even Gaul, while dense forests and marshlands provided natural protection and isolation. Communities here interacted with Celtic traders to the south, Germanic neighbors along the Elba, and Scandinavian Bronze Age groups across the sea. This environment produced a population that was both distinct and permeable, isolated enough to develop unique traditions, yet connected enough to absorb cultural and technological influences from across northern Europe. It is within this shifting, hybrid cultural landscape that the Cimbri likely emerged. Their mysterious identity was not an anomaly but a product of Jutland's role as Europe's northern frontier, a meeting place where languages, genetics, and traditions intertwined. Only in the last decade have scientists gained the ability to analyze DNA from Iron Age remains in Denmark and northern Germany. These genetic results are finally illuminating the origins of populations in and around Jutland, and the findings are striking. Ancient DNA sequencing reveals that Iron Age Northern Europeans in this region carried a mixed genetic signature. 
First, there is strong early Germanic ancestry, the same root found in later tribes like the Saxons and Angles. Second, researchers detected Celtic-like genetic signals, likely inherited from Central European Latin populations that traded, migrated, or intermarried with northern groups. And third, there is a clear Scandinavian Bronze Age component, reflecting the older Nordic cultures that once dominated southern Scandinavia. This combination creates a genetic triangle, a hybrid zone rather than a single lineage. The Cimbri likely emerged from precisely this mixed population, explaining why ancient writers struggled to categorize them. Their mobility also played a role. The Cimbri migrated thousands of kilometers, encountering multiple cultures along the way. This added layers of genetic complexity and contributed to their foreign, almost mythic appearance in Roman accounts. In short, Genetics confirms what history could not. The Cimbri came from a blended, dynamic population at Europe's northern edge. To understand the Cimbri's true origins, we must go far deeper than the Iron Age, back to the vast Indo-European migrations that reshaped Europe between 3000 and 2000 BCE. These migrations, driven by Yamnea and related steppe herders, spread across northern and central Europe, leaving behind a powerful genetic legacy known as steppe ancestry. This lineage forms the backbone of nearly all Indo-European-speaking populations in Europe, and the Cimbri were no exception. Genetic analyses reveal that the northern populations of Jutland and southern Scandinavia carried high levels of Yamnea-derived ancestry, inherited through the Nordic Bronze Age cultures that flourished from 1700 BCE onward. These were the ancestors of early Germanic peoples, known for their advanced metalwork, seafaring networks, and monumental burial mounds. The Cimbri emerged squarely within this continuum. Yet their ancestry is more complex. While their paternal lineages align strongly with Nordic and early Germanic tribes, their maternal DNA shows notable links to Central European and Atlantic Celtic regions. This suggests a long history of intermarriage, trade contacts, and migration between Northern and Central Europe, long before the mass movements recorded by Roman historians. This dual heritage helps explain why the Cimbri exhibited cultural elements of both Celts and Germans. Linguistically, they may have spoken an early Germanic dialect, but their decorative styles and social structures bore clear Celtic parallels. Genetic evidence supports the view that they were neither fully Celtic nor fully Germanic, but an intermediate Indo-European branch, shaped by the mixing zones of Iron Age Northern Europe. The deeper Indo-European ancestry of the Cimbri reveals them as a product of millennia of migrations, interactions, and cultural blending, a forgotten chapter in the long story of Eurasia's shifting genetic landscape. To the Romans, the Cimbri were a riddle, a tribe that looked Germanic, fought like Celts, and moved like nomads. This confusion wasn't simply Roman ignorance. It reflected the Cimbri's genuine position at the cultural frontier of Northern Europe. Their language remains unknown as no inscriptions survive. Linguists suspect it was an early Germanic dialect, yet classical writers described customs and war cries that sounded distinctly Celtic. Without a written record, Roman observers could only compare them to groups they already knew, and the Cimbri fit neatly into none of them. Their material culture deepened the mystery. Archaeological finds associated with northern Jutland communities show Celtic-style weaponry, long swords, decorated shields, and Latin metalwork, mixed with Proto-Germanic ritual practices, including bog sacrifices and ancestor veneration. Their military tactics also confused the Romans. They traveled with vast wagon trains, families, and livestock, resembling nomadic migrations more than typical tribal warfare. Their movements across Gaul, the Alps, and northern Italy made classical writers assume they were steppe raiders or displaced Celts, when in fact they were a migrating Iron Age population from the North Sea Edge. Modern science interprets the Cimbri more clearly. Archaeology, genetics, and cultural analysis reveal them as a frontier people, shaped by both Celtic and Germanic worlds, yet fully belonging to neither. They absorbed ideas from long-distance trade networks, borrowed technologies from neighbors, and developed traditions unique to their windswept northern homeland. What looked like strangeness to the Romans was, in reality, the complexity of a hybrid society. The Cimbri were a living testament to the fluidity of ancient Europe, a place where cultures blurred, identities shifted, 
and borders meant far less than historians once imagined. The Cimbri's dramatic downfall came at the hands of Gaius Marius in 101 BCE. But defeat didn't mean extinction. After their crushing losses at Vercelli, surviving Cimbri scattered across the Roman world. Some were taken captive and absorbed into Roman society as slaves, soldiers, or settlers. Others slipped northward, reintegrating with Germanic tribes along the Elba, Jutland, and coastal regions. Genetic modeling suggests that populations in Denmark, northern Germany, and parts of the Alpine regions contain detectable traces of ancestry consistent with Jutland Iron Age groups, including those likely related to the Cimbri. Roman sources also mention that some survivors were settled in the Alps, where echoes of northern cultural traits occasionally surface in later archaeological layers. This means the Cimbri did not vanish biologically. What disappeared was their cultural identity, dissolved into the much larger Germanic and Roman worlds that absorbed them. Their distinct name faded, but their genes persisted, carried quietly into future generations of Northern Europeans. In essence, the Cimbri's end was not an extinction but a transformation, the dispersal of a once cohesive tribe into the broader tapestry of European peoples. For centuries, the Cimbri lingered in the gray zone between myth and history, too mysterious to classify, too impactful to forget. Today, science is finally revealing the truth behind this enigmatic northern tribe. Rather than being purely Celtic or Germanic, the Cimbri were a hybrid frontier culture, shaped by the swirling interactions between Jutland's early Germanic groups, Central European Celts, and the deep ancestral roots of the Nordic Bronze Age. Their mobility, trade connections, and shifting alliances created a people who defied simple labels. Genetics now confirms that ancient Europe was far more fluid than traditional categories suggest. Cultures blended, identities evolved, and migrations reshaped entire regions long before Rome began writing the story. The Cimbri exemplify this reality. They were not an anomaly. They were a product of Europe's dynamic past, a people forged at the crossroads of land, sea, and culture. Though their name faded after their defeat, their descendants lived on, woven into the modern populations of the North. The Cimbri didn't vanish. Their DNA still lives in the North, whispering stories older than Rome itself.